let's talk about distance fields. This is the thing that I've wanted to talk about for a while because um, this is one of the last things that we're going to be covering, I think, in this course that is more of a like general, you should know that this exists thing uh, and not a very specific, like, hey, I think that this is a cool note that I just want to cover real quick as part of this. So distance fields. Every mesh in your game, unless you specifically uh, tell it not to, has a distance field that it emits. And I think we can show it in here somewhere. If we look through this, uh, maybe it is in show, actually. Under show, and then visualize. And then we have somewhere in here, I think we have mesh distance fields. This is the thing that we're going to be looking at today. So if we take a quick look at this... You pretty much see that this is the exact same thing, but without the text for apply. But the thing is, uh, we can specifically go into any of our meshes and say that it uh, does not affect distance field lighting, and it's just going to disappear from this, because now it's not emitting a distance field. Everything will emit a distance field by default, unless you specifically tell it not to. And how is this useful? Because like distance field lighting, what is that? We're not going to be talking about that right now, uh, but we can use these distance fields in our materials uh, for some uh, quite interesting stuff. So let's set this uh, back to just the normal view. So we're going to go into visualize and mesh distance fields. It's going to be turned off and we'll make a new material here real quick uh, to show of material distance fields. And this one I'm actually going to show you side by side in the viewport because there's going to be like a lot of stuff that I want to show you uh, going back and forth. So I'm just going to show it to you on one screen. We're going to uh, place a new actor in here, just going to be a simple shape. Let's do a sphere. Why not? Uh, it'll show the gradients a little bit better. And in here, in our material, which of course we're going to apply to that sphere uh, real quick, we will check our distance to nearest surface. Uh, you can give in customized positions here. Uh, if not, it's just going to use every single, I think in pixel space, maybe in vertex, I don't know, one or the other. Uh, it's going to uh, take the position of that and check, hey, the nearest surface to a distance field, how far away am I from it? So if we put this into the base color, uh, you're going to see that this thing, uh, first and foremost, just becomes white with some like black spots. And that is because this thing itself is emitting a distance field. So let's fix that first. If we check uh, distance fields, this thing is emitting a distance field and as such is at all times very close to a distance field. <laughs> so that's not exactly useful. Whenever you have a material that uses this, the mesh that it's on probably should not be emitting a distance field. So now the entire thing is white because it's more than one unit away from a distance field. If I lower this thing to uh, a mesh with a distance field, you can see that there's a little bit of blackness here. And that's not just shadow. If I go into unlit mode, you can still see there's blackness there. Uh, and even like down here, it's inside of a distance field. So it's going to render as black. Uh, it's not very useful though, is it? Because it's literally just like one centimeter, just one unreal unit away from something. Uh, it's going to show you, <laughs> hey, I am now near a distance field. At which point you're almost already clipping into that model. Uh, so that's not entirely useful, is it? The thing is, uh, we can just divide this because this is uh, a number that just goes up and up and up and up infinitely. Of course, the material will only display it's up to a value of one. Unless I suppose you plug this into uh, the emissive color, at which point uh, it will start displaying more brightly the further away it is from a distance field. So right now it's really close. If I pull this thing up very far, you can see it starts shining a lot more brightly because it's now further away from a distance field and now it's a lot closer to a distance field again. So it does actually go beyond a value of one. Uh, but that's still not entirely useful. Uh, unless you want something that is specifically more emissive when it is far away from something. Uh, or you can, I guess, one minus it and it will be more emissive when it's very close and then it doesn't matter. Uh, what we want to do is we just want to divide this, right? So right now, if we're 10 units away, uh, we get a value of 10. But maybe if we divide this by 100, if we're 10 units away, we're only at a value of 0 0.1. So maybe even less than uh, that. Maybe we want to divide it by 
500. Let's start with that. That means that we have to move at least 500 units away from something before we get a value uh, of 1. And a value of 0 is always going to be fixed at 0, because that's just how division works. So if we put this into the base color, uh, we can now see we have a much more smooth gradient. I'm going to set this to unlit again to show you a little bit better. You can see the bottom here is a lot darker than the top. And if I move this away, we can see it becomes lighter and lighter and lighter, and it becomes darker and darker and darker. Uh, maybe 500 was a little bit much. Let's actually go with the 100 that I uh, talked about in the beginning there. Now you can see it's a little bit more harsh of a cutoff. And this will just take the nearest distance field that it can apply to. So you can see uh, this works quite well around corners as well. And if I just go to like a totally separate mesh as well, uh, you see that it works quite well here too. And uh, this mesh itself this is actually uh, quite interesting because this object isn't moving. <laughs> it's just the um, shader that's moving it. I think it uses the like physical place of it in the world uh, to calculate its distance fields with not the shader offset. Uh, let me check that real quick. If we go into visualize and we uh, show mesh distance fields, you can suddenly see that, hey, this thing is being moved up and down through its shader. We've talked about that in a couple of videos ago. But the distance field itself doesn't move with that. Uh, I'm assuming that's because the distance field is generated on the CPU. And the moving of uh, the world position offset is an entirely like GPU thing. I don't think I mentioned it in that video uh, either. But you probably figured it out if you tried uh, playing around with it a little bit. It also doesn't move the collision, for instance. Because that's entirely in the CPU. And shader things happen on the GPU. Now, with all that said, uh, how is this useful? <laughs> uh, and it can be for some things, uh, sometimes. Uh, I am not going to go too deep into it because I want to show you another uh, distance field related thing. Uh, but one thing that this could be useful for is like a force field, right? So uh, in uh, certain cases, maybe you have like a, uh, instead of having a sphere, we can have like a cube. And that cube is like this big. And nothing in here emits a distance field, but the player will, right? And this will be entirely invisible until the player walks right up to it, at which point uh, that's not the right material. And if nothing around here uh, emits a distance field, I just quickly applied that material, uh, and only the player will, uh, then this will be, for instance, entirely invisible. And when the player gets close to it, it starts showing like the texture of the force field, which could be a really uh, quite cool. You can be really creative uh, with this in a number of different ways. Uh, I believe like uh, someone I know used this technique to like spawn in objects that emit distance fields along a spline to make like a path appear in a material, something like that. Like you can be really creative with this, but. This is just the nearest distance. This is just a one-dimensional uh, bit of information. This is just grayscale. But we have a second node that we can work with. And instead of just the distance to the nearest surface, what we can do is we can get a distance field gradient instead. And this does something quite similar, <laughs> uh, except that it takes in directionality into account. So if we uh, like apply this real quick, and we don't divide this, and uh, we try to normalize this. If you don't know what normalization does, it takes in a vector and makes it so that the uh, components of it, so the X, Y, and Z, or the R, G, and B in this case, all add up to a value of 1, uh, which can be very, very useful. So now we can see that we have a bunch of color information here. And this is going to show you, hey, the nearest distance field to me is under me, and I am X amount of distance away from it. But if we move this over here, we can uh, start seeing that the um, nearest distance field is in that direction, but it's actually in the negative direction. So it's just displaying as uh, black. <laughs> uh, I was really thrown off that for a moment. If we uh, move it to this direction, we can see it's red. If you want to make sure, by the way, that it works in both directions, like whether or not you're in the positive or the negative direction, uh, you can after we normalize this, we can make this uh, absolute, meaning that it's just going to take away any like negative values and turn them into positive values. So 
Now that we've done that, you can see there's a lot more like color on that thing as well. Uh, so now if we pull this over to this other direction, uh, it still displays as red. And if we pull it over to this side, it will display green. So now we have information regarding how far away from the nearest distance field we are, but also in what direction that distance field is. So for instance, we can do something like uh, getting our distance field gradient, uh, normalizing it, or maybe not normalizing it, I'll show you the difference in a moment. Uh, and then if we multiply that by a number, uh, the shader will actually like try to avoid the touching the distance fields, which can be like a really like cool new uh, little effect that we can do here. It also uh, like can mess up a little bit, so do be uh, careful with that. But like th this could be a neat little effect. If we don't normalize it, uh, that also uh, works well enough. Uh, it's just like a lot more subtle so at that point you have to multiply just by a bigger number uh which does kind of uh fix the issue that we just had also uh it, flashing uh it does kind of fix the issue that we had a little bit but you can see uh it also like blobs down um toward it when it gets close and only uh having one direction so like this effect probably could use a little bit more work uh, but you get the basic ID, I'm sure. You can do something similar even without the distance field gradient with directionality, uh, I should point out. You can do something uh, more along these lines, where we use the uh, distance to nearest surface. Let's divide that by a number like, I don't know, from 25 or something like that. Uh, and then if we saturate this, uh, if we saturate something, we just uh, clamp the value between 0 and 1. And we've gone over the clamp node before, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and if we haven't, I assume you know roughly what this does. Uh, it just sets any value under what the minimum is to the minimum, any value over the maximum to the maximum. Uh, and saturate is just a pre-existing node that takes anything and just clamps it between 0 and 1. So the values are never going to be under 0 or over 1. Uh, then if we get the world space normal here, uh, we can do the pixel normal world space, look at what that does as well, but I want to use the vertex normal for now, because we're going to be offsetting world position, and that's done on vertex basis. So uh, we can multiply that uh, with just a multiply node, and we'll give it a certain strength, like, I don't know, uh, like 20 that might be a little much to be honest with you but we're gonna figure it out in a moment and if we multiply those two things together and put that into the world position offset uh that will create this like kind of magnetic slimy uh feel to it and then instead of what we have now which is the further away it is to a surface the stronger the effect will be we want it actually to be the closer it is to a surface the stronger the effect will be so after we uh, saturate this to being a value of 0 to 1, uh, we'll just 1 minus this, which inverts it, and then we'll put that into the multiplication, and now what we have is like this little blobbing effect, which is quite neat. And again, this works quite well around corners as well, and we can do a lot of fun stuff with this. Uh, so that's kind of how all this distance field stuff works. You can do a lot of neat stuff with it, uh, just experiment a little bit with it and uh, try things out. This is one of the last things that I really wanted to show you in like this entire course that I think is pretty fundamental as like one of the tools in your toolkit uh, that you're going to be reusing in different ways and that you just need to be aware of. Which is not to say that this is the end of the material course, uh, we have a couple of videos left to do, uh, but those are more about, hey, I want to show you that these nodes exist because they're just like really really useful and for the full course if you're watching this in the future it should be all up on the youtube channel already but if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded there will be a link down below in the description to the patreon where you can find the full course and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas,